let's consider this simple program here. Here we can see we have three assignment statements and here we have got a multiple assignment statement. Now the first assignment will give A the value of 1, this one will give B the value of 6 and this one will give C the value of 9. And here X is assigned A, Y is assigned B and Z is assigned the value of C. Now the commas are needed because we need to know which variable value is assigned to which variable. So for example x and a come before the first comma so clearly a is assigned to x. The y comes after the first comma so does the b so the value of b is assigned to y and finally the z and the c we can see come after the second comma so the value that's in c is stored in z so z ends up being the same value as c and this line simply prints the value of x y and z to the console. Each program statement within a computer program does very little and as a human being it's very tedious sometimes for us to think like a computer. So one of the things we can do to force us to think what the computer is doing is to produce a trace table. Now a trace table will force our concentration onto what each line of the program actually does because sometimes we can be looking at a program for quite a while wondering why the hell it's not working properly and we become a little bit lazy in our trying to find out why it's not working and sometimes it's a good idea just to simply sit back and look at each line of code and see what it actually does to the variables in the program. And one of the techniques you can do to help you with this is to produce something called a trace table. Now we're going to produce a trace table for this simple program and really this is a nonsense program but it's simply designed here to allow us to produce a trace table and to get an understanding of what one is. And you'll be surprised that no matter how long you've been coding you'll often find it's a very good idea to come to a trace table especially towards the end of the day when your mind's just wandering onto the next pint of guineas and you can be sitting there thinking well what actually is going on on each line of code? Now, if you then come to a program statement that you don't know what it does and you're going through your code, it means you don't know what that section of code is actually doing because you have to understand what each line does. Now, this thing's called black box testing as well, which simply allows you to test your code in other ways. But we're talking about the mechanics now of a piece of code and the importance of a trace table cannot be underestimated. So I'm going to show you a trace table for this program and recommend that you simply have a go at producing trace tables for a number of small programs just so you get a handle on what they are. And then trace tables in cooperation with debuggers become a very useful technique to finding bugs in pieces of code. So for this particular program, let's look at a trace table. Now the format you can see here is a typical format for a trace table. And what you have, you have these column headings here, the first one statements, and below you can see we have every line of the computer program in the order in which it executes. And we can see that the remaining column headings correspond to the variables that occur in the computer program. So this is a typical format for a trace table. Let's have a look at this statement here, A is assigned 1. And we can see that that program statement appears here in the trace table. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this row here to show the state of all of the variables that occur in the program after A is assigned 1 has executed. Now I must stress that, after it has executed. Now here we can see the state of the variables after A is assigned 1 has executed. And we can see quite rightly that we've put in this column here 1 because A has been assigned 1. If you look at all the other columns you see I've wrote down don't care. Now this comes from a what's called a don't care condition. It doesn't mean I don't give a monkeys what's in B, C, X, Y and Z. It's just that those variables I've just mentioned don't exist yet. You see B doesn't exist until the execution of the next program statement. So we simply need to put something here. You don't have to put don't care if you want. You can put a dot there but put something there it just shows that you've thought about what's going to happen to each of these variables after the first statement a is assigned one has executed now when this particular statement executes b is assigned six what we will get is the following and we can see that in this particular column we will get b with the value of six now the key also when you do a trace table is to make sure you show what's in A and of course A will be 1 
So I've just copied this one down from the previous row. But you need to actually make statements like, well, A hasn't been altered. It's still the same. And you can see over here we have all of these as the don't care condition again. Now, when this particular program statement executes, C is assigned 9, we will get the following entry. And we can quite clearly see that here we have 9 reflecting the fact that C has been given the value of 9. And here we can see that we have 1 and 6 for A and B respectively. And that's because they have been copied down from the previous row because the program statement we're currently looking at has had no effect on the variables A and B. And of course X, Y and Z we still have in our don't care condition. This multi-assignment statement now executes and we can see that the trace table will show the values you can see here. Now quite clearly what has happened is we can see that X has been given the value of A, Y has been given the value of B, and Z has been given the value of C. And that's the end of that particular statement. And now we can see that we have a value in all of the variables and none of them are in a don't care condition. And now the next program statement to execute is this one here, print x, y, and z. And what we need to do with the trace table is to show the values of the variables a, b, c, x, y, and z after this particular statement has executed. Well, this particular statement will have no effect on these variables, so they will maintain the value that they had in the previous row, as you can see here. And of course, what will happen with this particular statement? It'll send the values of x, y, and z which we can see here are 1, 6 and 9, to the console as we can see demonstrated by the runtime here. And there you can see you have the 1, 6 and 9. So we've now produced the trace table for this simple program. And what I recommend you do is have a practice of producing trace tables yourself for some simple programs initially. And just get into the habit of doing this because you'll find it is a valuable aid when you're debugging code for more complex programs that you'll come across during your studies of learning how to program in Python or any other language for that matter. Trace tables are very useful, any other programming language that is. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.